Vienna has retained its ranking as the world's most livable city. And the world's most livable city in 2022. Vienna scored an almost perfect 99.1%. My name is Ramon Huidobro. I am a software developer, a developer relations engineer, and developer educator living here in Vienna in Austria. And I've been living here for a very long time. That's 22 years. Why move here when you're 11 or 12? Well, I mean, it's, it's quite simple, really. My father got a job here and our whole family moved here. And, and well, we fell in love with the city. We fell in love with the people. And I met my wife, who's Austrian, and just sort of stayed here. But it's not without its problems, especially as an immigrant. Now, I'm extremely grateful for everything that's been afforded to me by being able to live in Austria. As a Chilean citizen, it hasn't all been easy for us. Language, integration, residence permits. But now I consider Vienna my home. When we moved here, the Viennese people, they didn't, they didn't like it when you didn't speak German. Speaking German, it's, it's changed, I have to say, since 2000. But when we moved here, not speaking German was tough. Being able to get acclimated to the rules can be tricky as well. Viennese people are very particular about how they like it. Sundays, quiet days, extraordinarily quiet, to a fault sometimes. Making sure that you're not loud in the, in the public transport, for example. I've been told off so many times. Being shushed or being told, Sie sind zu laut, is scary at first, but you get used to it. I'm very grateful to Vienna because it introduced me to the developer community as a whole. Um, I started attending meetups here in Vienna. I ended up organizing those meetups here in Vienna and just sort of growing along with the Viennese community and, and, making, and helping do my part what it is to making it what it is today. Thank you, Joe, for that lovely introduction. And hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Paul Leitner. I work as a data scientist at Kununu. Kununu uh, is a platform where you can rate your employer and you can see what it's like to work for a certain company. And yeah, I, I'm from Vienna, lived abroad for a while, and I'm back there now. After living in uh, Berlin and then Munich and Barcelona for uh, two and a half years, three years, I actually decided to move back to Vienna because when I went to visit family uh, living south of Vienna, I actually uh, arrived at the airport in the city and um, visited some friends before taking the train south. And I realized that this is actually a really beautiful city and I'd never really noticed it before when I lived here. And I think a week later, I got a random message from a recruiter if I wanted to work in, in a tech company in, in Vienna. I was like, all right then, sure. So, right place, right time, I guess. One thing I like very much about Vienna is Vienna is extremely dense, especially moving back here from Berlin. It shocked me almost how close everything is together. I'm in the very fortunate position that I can walk or bike almost everywhere. So, for example, for my daily commute to work, I would just get on my bike and I'll be at work in, I think, nine minutes. So I just drive through the scenic historic part of the city and I'm there. So I bike everywhere because I really enjoy, you know, getting to move outside. It's a really historic and beautiful city. Um, I mean, it's as beautiful and historic as, for example, Zurich or London. Um, it's arguably got even better public transport and uh, especially the rent and living situation is really good here. Um, the city is, um, is governed by the Socialist Party, which you can totally tell. They do a lot of uh, things for, you know, the small things to make the city more livable, making it more green, planting trees, um, improving the bike lanes um, and keeping rent very, very affordable, which is actually really nice and you can tell and um, surprisingly quite a few tech companies doing really interesting things. I wasn't the best student in school, but my parents wanted me to go into some kind of engineering or science. And I was doing okay at computer classes in school, so I went with that.
Luckily, a few years later, I found my calling. Somebody took a chance on me, gave me a freelancing position, and ever since, I've been developing software in a whole bunch of different places, which has been great because I was able to try out different industries and still developing software. Even though I'm a little shy, I was teaching children to code, and I started going to meetups, and I discovered my passion for public speaking, event organizing, and eventually, developer relations, or DevRel. Now I work as a developer relations engineer at a company called Suborbital, where I do web assembly and material for education for emerging developers. Hello everyone, welcome to lesson number 350. In essence, developer relations, in my opinion, is efforts that a company or entity undertake to reach developers, get feedback, or have them interact with open source projects or developer-focused products. How I became a proper developer is actually kind of a funny story. I originally studied business, international business that is, um, in Lower Austria, and um, fell into the startup scene pretty much immediately after school. So I pretty quickly realized that I enjoy the, the quantitative side of things. So I started not only delivering analysis, but also building sort of the data structures on there. After working at a few startups in, in Germany and in Spain, I basically decided to make the switch completely to the quantitative side and uh, basically made a deal with a very small startup from Vienna. I, was, I think I was employee number seven and they had four founders, so it was really early. So I basically told them, uh, yeah, I have experience in the whole business development side and I'm going to do that for you guys, but I'm also going to switch to the development side and I'm going to just take online courses and we'll see how it works out basically. And they said, um, yeah, sure, try. They were skeptical at first, understandably, because I didn't really have any formal background in tech at all. But over the course of only half a year or something, I took a really a lot of online courses on the weekends. And then from there, that really grew. So basically, um, I grew into that role pretty organically. And so after, I think, a year or two of working in that profession, I figured I'd do, um, start, uh, do a master's on the side. I really enjoyed the learning process. There's, a, there's an element of puzzle solving to programming that always was really enjoyable to me and yeah I never looked back there from there. Good to see you. Thanks. Uh, all good. A lot of people say that Vienna is a tech city. Right. I wouldn't call it a tech city. That's. Yeah. I think that's reaching. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's which is fine. You know. I mean, very, very little <laughs> cities can be credibly called tech tech sure. hubs or tech cities. That's fair. Um, something that's very Viennese. How much people here are into like degrees? Just as a, yes. as something that you, that you, you know used to build your air of professionalism and i think especially in tech that's changing thank god yes. because it's a little it's a little strange especially coming from uh, coming back from germany where that's not really a thing especially not in berlin and i remember i came into the office of my new company and there was like on the door there was the name of the person and then a comma <laughs> ba you know, like bachelor of arts like who cares? And I'm not sure what role that was even. I think it was some random role yeah. that didn't really relate to that at all. And that's totally changing. That's because at the end of the day, if you're a front-end developer, if you're a good front-end developer, who cares what degree you have or don't have? Absolutely. Thank God. Absolutely. No, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's funny you mention that because like when I was having some problems with you know, back in, I think it was like 2018 or 2019 that I had a massive burnout. And okay. I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over to, to some full-time work. And I went looking around. And, you know, I, I had never heard of a collective vertrag before. <laughs> so once they put me through the checklist right. and they're like, ah, so you don't have that bachelor degree, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to yeah, put you thing. at this level here. That's actually a thing. Uh, so yes, I, I know you have eight years of experience, but, you know, you don't have a bachelor degree. So, yeah. and I was like, thank you. I'm going to go finish it. I haven't finished it yet. All right. <laughs> Fingers crossed then. <laughs> well, we'll see. It's funny, working for a few years did make me appreciate some of the technical aspects to go back to university and be like, okay, 
I think I, I think I appreciate vector algebra now. <laughs> I had, I actually had a very similar experience because I did, I did, uh, I changed to tech from business oh, with yeah. online courses basically, and then did a master's afterwards, and I really appreciated it because I, I could feel that when you work on projects, you, you, you learn basically on the job, which yeah. is amazing, Incredible. but also you get these really weird holes in your memory. The role of data scientist is it's been harder and harder to grasp because I think pretty much everyone knows that it's a it's a really hyped field. There was this really famous article in the I think Harvard Harvard Business Review how it's the sexiest job of the 21st century. Data science is pretty much at the intersection of math and programming. So you have a lot of statistics in there. You have a lot of programming in there to actually access and use and wrangle your data. But I think broadly you could just categorize it as deriving insight from large amounts of data that goes beyond basically statistics. I think it's a fair point to ask if all data scientists are developers. And I'd say, yeah, fair, not all of them are. Um, some companies say they're looking for data scientists and they're looking for people to create nice dashboards in Excel or Tableau or ClickView. I'd agree that's not a developer role, but I would also not consider that a data scientist. Developer salaries in general, I think, are fairly good. While it's, it's becoming more and more um, standard for Austrian companies to write out yearly salaries, not monthly ones, um, you have to remember that in Austria there's a mandatory Christmas and summer vacation bonus which means in practice that your yearly salary is divided into 14 and not 12. And you will receive basically a double salary in June and November. Um, and not just that, but the 13th and 14th salary are treated preferentially in terms of tax. So it's actually usually quite a bit more than twice as much in June and November. When I moved to Vienna as a very young child, I brought with me my love for old toys and old games. And, well, mechanical keyboards are just another joy of mine. This keyboard here, for example, I got with a kit is an Atreus and one of my first ever hardware projects where I had to, one by one, solder on these keys that click and teeny tiny transistors one by one onto this. If it breaks, I know how to fix it. And there's something very empowering about that. A large part of my family is really outdoorsy, especially in terms of mountains. So it's a bit of a running gag when I spend uh, the weekend outside, I come back with um, a whole sack full of mushrooms or uh, some, some crystals that I found there. Oftentimes, especially when the weather is nice on, uh, in summer, I take a very short Friday, so basically start work at home at 8, um, quit around 1 or 2, um, pack everything up and um, go outside the city to um, usually the mountainside to hike somewhere. You jump on a train, which is train station is again 15 minutes by bike, and you're at the trailhead in 2 hours, 3 hours. So yeah, I'd um, go to Styria. You, disembark the train and you're right in the forest and you just hike up somewhere and um, if the weather's nice I stay up there overnight and then come back to Vienna Saturday evening. It's a really nice break from the from the whole city routine. Actually oftentimes after work I, um, I have my hammock with me and a book and I just um, when the days are long just stop by a park hang up my hammock and read for an hour or two which is really nice.
dozens of developers find jobs across Europe using Honeypot. If you're up for a new challenge in one of these European cities, sign up at honeypot.io. If you want to see more tech documentaries, then subscribe so you don't miss the next one.